So now that I've standardized my base, um, it's time to use it to titrate an unknown acid. I've chosen unknown acid number two, and I've poured some into about 40 milliliters into a beaker for us to work with. So we don't contaminate the solution in the bottle. So in order to um, titrate this, I'm gonna want an exact volume of my unknown acid that I'll put into my Erlenmeyer flask. And so I'm going to use a pipette to do that. Um, and this will measure our volume much more accurately than a graduated cylinder. Here's what it looks like. And this one will deliver exactly 10 milliliters if I fill it so the meniscus falls right on that um, brown line right here. It's the only line on here. So this only measures 10.00 milliliters, plus or minus 0.04 milliliters. So I'm gonna use a bulb uh, to, which I can press all the air out of and put on to the top, and then I'll be able to use these arrows up and this arrow down to control the volume inside of the pipette. Um, before I use it, I'm going to condition my pipette. So I'm going to take up 10 milliliters. Um, I'm going to condition this three times. I've already actually done it twice, uh, which is lovely. I'm just going to take it up to that 10 milliliter mark and then drain the liquid. And so I'll do this process uh, three times to make sure that the any residue inside of this Erlenmeyer or inside this pipette is really just uh, residue from that unknown acid that we're interested in. All right, so I'm going to use a 125 milliliter flask. I'm going to use a stir bar and stir plate this time. So I'm going to put in a little uh, magnetic stir bar. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more of my unknown acid number two. And now my um, plan is to pipette 10 milliliters of my unknown acid. See if you can see that. So there we go. We have the meniscus right, the bottom of the meniscus right on the line, just about. So it should be about 10.00. Um, and now I'm going to deliver that into my Erlenmeyer flask. And now that we have 10 milliliters of our um, acid, we're going to bring our volume up to about 50. And I'm gonna do that just by pouring in deionized or distilled water until about the 50 uh, milliliter marking. It doesn't matter how much water we add. We're doing this so it's easier um, to stir and see the change that occurs as we add our base. And I'm gonna add uh, several drops of our phenylphthalein indicator that will be clear when it's acidic and it will be pink when it is basic. Now we'll start stirring this. So now this will do the stirring for me, which is so convenient. Let's get in a little closer here. And for my first round, I'm gonna go um, a little bit faster as uh, a way to determine where I expect my endpoint to be. So I have a continuous stream of acid, or sorry, base from my burette going into my acid as it stirs. And as that kind of pink splash sticks around longer and longer, I'll slow down. But we oftentimes just use this first trial to get a ballpark picture of how much of our base we're really going to need to add. So that way we can be a little bit more cautious as we approach the end point um, in our second trial. So now it's hanging around quite a bit, right? I wonder if I stop. So, but it goes clear, so it's not sticking around. I'm gonna slow down and go dropwise. Oh, it's very close. It doesn't stick around for very long.
There we go. You can see there's half a drop still hanging on, so I'm gonna squirt that into my solution. I have a nice light pink color. Um, and now I'm gonna read where my burette um, is at on this. I've cleaned up I've, um, my last trial, and now I'm gonna do a second trial. Again, I'm gonna use my pipette to measure up 10 millimeters. Okay, um, so our meniscus is at about the 10 milliliter mark. It's like right on it. So I've got 10.00 milliliters of acid that I'm gonna add into a clean Erlenmeyer flask. I've added that all in. I'm gonna remove the bowl and set this aside. Add a clean stir bar. And add some deionized water to bring this up to about 50 milliliters. Roughly. So my starting initial volume is the same as it was at the end of my first trial. Um, and now I'm gonna add the first 10 milliliters quickly. Okay, I've added about 10 milliliters and I'm gonna go slowly for the remainder um, and slowing down more and more as I go. So I've got a fast rate of um, addition for a drip, but it is drip wise. And I'm expecting this to be at about um, 28, getting really close to that now. So I'm gonna slow down. And I'm at about 28, I'm at 28 exactly. And I'm not seeing any color change and haven't noticed anything pink. And so this is something that happens in every single one of our labs is forgetting to put in the indicator. And now it's still, I caught it. Usually when this happens, we put in the indicator and it goes bright pink, we've already missed our end point. And so when I'm performing this experiment, I'm watching for that flash of pink because that's going to tell me that I have added my phenyl failing indicator. And without it, it should be a big red flag that something is wrong here. I would keep adding base until uh, I was out of it without seeing any color change, without adding that. So now I'm seeing these flashes of pink. I'm going drop wise. And they're lingering for a while. So we're very close to the end point. And there's that light pink color. Let's see if it lasts long enough. It's sticking around this time longer. It's still a very pale pink though. It's starting to clear up. So I'll do one more drop. Ooh, did two and I got a bright pink color. So that was a situation where I went one drop over probably, um, which is fine. So we'll record this data um, and we'll see how it looks when we actually calculate the concentration of acid that we have compared to our other trials. Um, so I'm gonna show you the burette. We're now ready to set up our third and final trial. Um, I'm going to measure out 10 milliliters using my pipette of our unknown acid number two. So let's look at this um, measurement. It looks like I got the meniscus just about on the brown line, maybe a hair underneath. So I'm gonna add this to my Ellen Meyer flask. I'm gonna remove the bulb and set aside my pipette. 
I'm adding a clean stir bar to my flask and setting up my burette. So again, um, we're doing the same volume. So we expect something around 15 milliliters. So I'm gonna add the first 10 milliliters very quickly um, to this solution. I've got my 10 milliliters in there. And this time we're gonna add our three drops of fennel failing. Maybe that was four. And add some water to bring this up to about the 50 milliliter mark. And I'm using distilled water for this. The amount of water does not matter. Okay, um, I'm now ready to start adding my standardized uh, base. And again, I'm going to add, I'm, I'm starting at the 29.85 milliliter marking. So I'm going to go down to 38 quickly. There we go, I've added about 10 milliliters. Um, and now I'm gonna slow this down to uh, a fast drip rate until I start seeing the, the pink colors start really lingering. You can see those little flashes of pink that are so reassuring. All right, I think that might be it. This is sticking around. It's a nice light color, but a little bit darker than we were just seeing. Yeah, so now we have a nice light pink color that's sticking around. Now to measure this, I'm actually gonna lower it. There we go. And that completes our three trials of our titration. I can see that pink color has stuck around for well over a minute. Um, so I think this was a, a good trial.